Hi everyone, this video is to illustrate the safe uh, install and startup of a Mira boiler. So starting in the front, we're going to work our way across and we're going to follow the piping. First thing we come to is our economizer. We want to make sure that our economizer piping um, has not been modified in any way. It is well supported and in this case um, it's, bitten, it's hidden so there is no safety uh, trip hazards. Leads us to our automatic bottom blowdown. Again, we want to make sure that this is well supported and away from any uh, potential problems. Leads us to our uh, chimney. Our chimney, uh, you'll find, works best with minimal restrictions and a short stub stack. Next would be our um, feed water tank. Number one thing on the feed water tank is we want to make sure that our water pumps are installed as close as possible, preferably underneath of our feed water tank, to make sure that we have enough head pressure that we are not going to cause any pump cavitation. The normal installation would include a shutoff valve, a strainer, comes to our pump, and um, Muir recommends having a check valve after the pump with a pressure gauge for testing. In the back, we have our chemical feed system. We're feeding our chemicals based on a pulse signal from our water meter. From there, it will be fed directly into our feed water tank. And the number one um, issue here is to make sure that the chemical feed is below the water level. Um, coming into the back of the tank, we have our preheater. We have our condensate return, we have our vent, we have our makeup system, and um, we recommend, again, having a separate feed water sample line, in this case for feed water. It'll be fed to our sample cooler, so the operator can get a safe, uh, workable sample. It comes to our blowdown separator. Okay, again, venting is very important. So is it is a five inch vent going up, a safe discharge to drain, and we have our cold water makeup to make sure that we're um, putting the water to the sewer at an allowable temperature. We have our surface blowdown. Just like the other blowdown, um, it's very important that this piping be well supported and discharged to a safe location. We have our main gas supply coming in. Okay, because we're using um, a Roots gas pulse meter, we always install a strainer just for the protection of the, the meter. We have a gas pressure gauge to make sure that we are in the proper uh, range for operating gas pressure. Coming across leads us to our safety valve. Okay, notice the piping is discharging on the roof, okay, to a so safe location where nobody can get scalded or burned. The last part, that's the, probably the most important part of the installation, would be your chemical feed and water softening system. Okay. In this case, we have a duplex water softener, followed by a polisher, which almost guarantees a zero hardness leakage. For this system, we, re we require two brine tanks, the smaller one being for the polisher, the larger one being for our duplex softener. From there, it comes to our water meter, and we're feeding our chemical from our three drums based on a pulse signal that we will get from our water meter to our timer, to our pumps. And these are very easily adjustable by setting your stroke and your pulse rate. The last part in check would be our colorimetry unit. Um, currently, our colorimetry units will be set up for sampling on an hourly basis, which will guarantee um, reliable service. Some quick checks that we're going to do on the system before the boiler is actually started is number one, we want to make sure we got a good supply of salt in both our brine tanks, okay? Not only for the polisher, but for the main softener as well. From here, before we put water into our feed water tank, we want to do a manual uh, hardness check just to make sure that everything is operating the way it's intended and that the regeneration is not needed. On our chemical level tanks, um, number one, we want to make sure that we have enough chemical, okay, easily checked 
by just giving it a little bit of a shake. Uh, we want to make sure that all our three pumps are primed. Okay, if priming is needed, um, all we really do is open up the little vent hole on it, and very simple, it'll just vent back into the tank. From there, we're going to go to the color metry, and again, a very simple check is just to put it through a manual test simply by pressing the manual monitor and waiting a minute or two for the results. If everything there checks out as um, recommended by Mira, the next step would be to fill the tank and proceed from there. One final step we're going to do before we actually fill our feed water tank is we're going to do a manual check of uh, the water quality. So a very quick uh, hardness test. Number one, we're just going to get a quick sample, let it flush out for a second or two, make sure it's fresh. Quick rinse of the bottle. And what we're looking for is a 25 milliliter sample. We're going to put in five drops of our hardness buffer. Followed by one scoop of a hardness powder. The results should turn a blue, which indicates uh, no water hardness and the uh, water quality with, is within Mira specs. And the results are uh, soft water. One final step that um, is recommended before turning the power on to the boiler is um, checking all your wire connections. Very simple to check your terminal bar. Just by pulling on the wires, you're able to see any loose connections that are going to come back to cause a problem later. On our other terminals, which are more of a screw type, okay, again, it's recommended that they be thoroughly checked. and any repairs made in at that time. Takes us down to our water pump fan motor contactor and circuit breakers. Number one priority here is to make sure that uh, number one, the wires are tight, is secured. Number two is that the amp rating of the circuit breaker matches the nameplate rating of the water pump and fan motor and set it accordingly. Before we turn our, our boiler on, what we're going to do next is we're going to check our rotations of our fan motor and water pump. A quick, efficient way to do that is simply by bumping our motor after all the wire connections have been checked to make sure that everything is nice and tight and looking at our impeller on one end or our, our motor cooler on the other end for rotation. And simply just by the design, you're able to make sure that the direction is proper for proper airflow, proper combustion. Um, on, a, on a side note, depending on the installation, it's always good to have a second person help you check rotation of the water pump, just for the fact that after you pump the motor, um, it's almost impossible to make it back to the pump to check the rotation. So always, in a case like this, a second set of eyes is always helpful. Okay, now that our uh, pre-checks have been done, uh, what we're going to do next is um, we're going to take the pilot out, we're going to fire the pilot outside, check its condition. Um, on the BL boiler, the procedure is with the boiler off. We're going to go to our function switch. We are going to select maintenance mode with the rotary switch. Flip it to yes. Back inside back to our function switch down position and now we have our M flashing on our screen plus the beep beep showing that we are in the maintenance mode so once again with the boiler off we're gonna go to burner adjust and we're just gonna follow the on-screen instructions we're gonna select pilot we're going to press and hold 
to enter the data. From there, what we're going to do next is we're going to remove our pilot assembly. The next thing we want to do is we want to remove our flame eye from the housing and just put it in a somewhat safe area out of harm's way just for testing purposes. For safety reasons as well, we are going to close our manifold gas valve. From this position, we are now going to start the boiler. So right now we are doing a visual check of our pilot and just by the condition of it we can see that we are a little bit gas rich. And normally on an LX, that is the type of flame that we are looking for. A nice, crisp, steady flame. Hi everyone, we are now going to continue on with the safety checks of the boiler. Uh, the next alarm to be tested is going to be our high limit, also known as emergency stop. Now this is one of the easier switches to test. Um, what we will do is we'll just turn our operating pressure switch down below the, uh, the pressure of the boiler. With the alarm reset, always remember to reset the pressure switch. And return the set point back to uh, the normal setting. The next alarm that we will check now will be the low gas pressure. And this one is simple enough to check by shutting off the main gas supply once the main burner has been established.
And once again, after the alarm has been silenced, slowly open the gas valve and proceed to your next alarm. In this case, uh, we will simulate high gas pressure switch next. And again, very simple to check. With the main burner on, we will simply close the manual ball valve on the manifold to simulate high gas pressure. And once again, with the alarm reset, don't forget to open up the main gas valve once again. The last alarm that we will simulate will be the air pressure. To, to uh, simulate that, we will simply turn off our breaker for our, for our fan motor and start the boiler. With the alarm reset and silenced, please engage the circuit breaker once again for proper operation. That is just a brief summary of how to test the safeties on Amira prior to boiler commissioning. Thank you. Um, one other test that we will do uh, for simulation will be the low water cutoff. We will trip the breaker of the feed water pump Once the boiler is running, we will open up the bottom blowdown valve just to speed it up and to simulate a low water condition. After resetting the alarm condition, please close the blowdown valve. Turn the water pump breaker back on. And then you are free to proceed to the completion of your safety checks of the boiler. Thank you. Hi everyone, uh, now that the safeties have been completed, our next step is going to be to uh, measure our gas differentials, our manifold and combustion. Now it is a normal procedure for Mira's um, recommendations that the uh, main gas orifice differential pressure be considered the most important and the manifold be used for a quick reference check only. So we will start with high fire first. Once high fire is established, we will quickly do a, a manometer check to make sure that our differential pressure is within range of that particular boiler model. Using a, a manometer, we're going to connect one side of the, diff of the uh, main gas orifice plate on the low side of the manometer and we will connect the 
other side to the other port and it'll give us our high fire differential gas pressure. Once our main um, high fire gas differential has been recorded on our uh, uh, commissioning report, we can simply disconnect one of our ports off our manometer and it will give us our manometer gas pressure. And again, once the recording has been done, we can move to a combustion test to make sure that the combustion, including CO, NOx, and O2 is all within range. Okay, um, now that our gas pressures have been verified, that they are within specs of the Mira uh, recommendations, we're gonna proceed to the back of the boiler for a quick check of combustion. It's uh, highly recommended that uh, the analyzer probe not be inserted into the economizer chimney until the main burner has been established. Uh, otherwise, you risk the chance of very erratic uh, readings on your meter. Now that high fire has been established, Okay, after the combustion test, to make sure, uh, to verify that combustion, the O2, CO, NOx is all within Mira specifications, the exact same procedure can be followed for low fire. After putting the boiler in low fire hold, simply again, check your manometer, your differential, your combustion. In the case that combustion is needed, please use first your air damper. Very clearly marked, the low fire bolt is on the upper side, the high fire is on the lower side. And it's just a matter of turning it counterclockwise in the, in the matter of low fire. Turning the screw counterclockwise will lower your O2 or close the damper. Turning the screw clockwise will open the damper or raise your O2. In the high fire position, it is opposite. By turning the bolt counterclockwise, you will open the damper Clockwise, you will close the damper to lower your O2. In the case of your manometer and your gas differential not being within specifications due to low gas pressure, your main regulator will need to be increased to, get, to achieve the proper output of the boiler. Clockwise, is increasing the gas pressure, De counterclockwise will be decreasing gas pressure. The final step in the boiler commissioning would to be record your pilot gas, differential, your pilot air, differential, and lastly, your furnace pressure, which will come in handy for future uh, troubleshooting and reference. We'll start off with our pilot gas. Just like our main gas supply, we are gonna measure our differential. So our one hose here, we have before our pilot gas orifice. And our low pressure side of the hose is connected over to our pilot assembly before it goes into the main burner. Our pilot air, very similar. Once again, we're checking the high side before the orifice. And we can use the same hose as earlier going into the main burner. The last measurement 
will be our furnace pressure, which can be taken directly off the wind box itself. In the um, uh, MI panel installation, okay, please note, very important, that the um, our pressure transducer not be mounted directly on your steam header. Okay, highly recommended that you uh, install a branch line coming off of your steam header, minimum half inch NPT, okay? Run it, again, properly supported throughout, coming down with a pressure gauge for calibration purposes. We have our transducer, which is controlling our MP1200, and lastly, a drain valve, either aimed to the floor, outside, to a safe area. And this will be needed um, yearly to flush out your line just to maintain any corrosion problems that may exist inside the pipe. A last note on the uh, MP1 panel is um, the amount of dry contacts that are available uh, inside the panel already supplied. Um, some of them could be emergency stop, lump start, lump stop. Uh, they are numerous and they are there for the using.